Hi, the humble breadboard. Yes, you've no doubt got one in your kit and you've no doubt used it before. It is one of the most uh, popular tools for quick circuit prototyping and well for good reason because you can just plug components in there's no solder and you can move things around and you can generally have a play with stuff just to see if something's going to work before you dedicate it to a PCB and it's good for experimentation but it has uh, a couple of limitations the first one of course is that it's not permanent you know things can you can get dicky contacts and all sorts of stuff like that which we won't go into but the second is that the breadboard, as you should know, if you don't, well, you will now, that it's not designed for high frequency uh, stuff because, you know, we've got wires hanging all over the place. It's not good. They're all acting as antennas, big uh, loops of things, which isn't good for switching stuff. For example, you wouldn't want to build a switch mode power supply on here, for example. It's not going to work that well. And uh, you'll see, in a, uh, as you saw in a previous uh, video where I was playing around with this um, precision constant current circuit yeah it's not that great on the breadboard because of all the intercontact capacitance on here it's you know it's not very good at all but hey if you can get something working on the breadboard then that gives you good confidence that it's going to work on a proper PCB when you actually lay the thing out properly you do nice tight ground loops and power loops and keep everything nice and short and tidy and stuff like that and you don't have all that stray capacitance between the contacts now um, you know, the rule of thumb in the industry is that sort of you don't do anything more than like a megahertz on the breadboard or and the intercontact capacitance. Well, I've always taken this normally oh, about 10 puff, you know, 10 picofarads, something like that of that order. But what exactly is it? Now, I've looked at a few data sheets for these things and well, I haven't been able to find an intercontact capacitance value on here and well some figures that are floating around out there um, not actually in the data sheets are anywhere from 2 to 25 picofarads per contact strip and well I don't know what is it I mean that's an order of magnitude different and difference is it 2 picofarads or is it 20 picofarads but what is it well I decided let's actually measure it so I've got some breadboards here a few different uh, types and I've got our LCR meter, so there's nothing better than actually getting real empirical data on this thing. Because I, I did a quick Google, and I couldn't really find anything out there of anyone who's actually done any real measurements on this thing. Just this wide, you know, wide open ballpark figure of two to twenty-five picofarads. So I've got my Agilent U1733C LCR meter here, and well, you know, down at 120 hertz, it's only got uh, 0.1 picofarads resolution there but if we go up in frequency which is what we're going to have to do on this breadboard because the capacitance will change with frequency of course it's not going to be fixed but this puppy if we go up in frequency one kilohertz bingo we get an extra digit we're down to uh, 10 uh, femto farads there awesome and there we go 10 kilohertz we're now at Look at this, one femtofarad resolution. Awesome. But we, this one actually goes up to 100 kilohertz as well, and we'll, but we don't get an extra digit on there. But that's fantastic. So we'll be able to probe that after we uh, null out the residual reading of uh, the meter and the leads here. We can null that out. We'll be able to fairly accurately, or, you know, uh, good enough, measure the capacitance of these various different breadboards we've got here. Now, if you've never seen inside a breadboard like this, well, you should. You should take the back off and uh, have a look at the actual strips. They go in columns down here like this, and if you flip it over, you can see the metal contacts down in there like that, and those little spring bar contacts. And because they're long like that, they're, well, what are they? They're like the plates of a capacitor. Between any two wires or any two contacts, you're always going to get some capacitance and there's the dielectric material as well usually these things are like uh, phosphor bronze contacts but uh, some of them can be uh, silver plated as well on your higher quality breadboards and well you know and the backing also will have an effect on that uh, capacitance well this has just got a spongy backing on it some I think this one down in here I haven't taken it out for a while, but I don't think there's any backing on at all. It's just the hard plastic uh, backing. There's no sponge on the bottom of that one.
So first up, we'll have a look at uh, my main breadboard. I've got a few of these. K&H brand, it's a decent uh, brand name, model RH32. Standard uh, tie point configuration, and we'll just measure the vertical uh, between two vertical columns down there, just in a random location, shouldn't really matter. All right, so we're at 100 kilohertz here to give us the greatest resolution and to operate at the highest uh, frequency possible. And I haven't actually plugged them in yet. I've just got them sort of resting on there. So because when you sort of, you know, touch these leads, it's going to, especially at this sort of resolution, it's going to change around a bit. Like if I put my fingers on there, of course, it's going to go up because of the capacitance of my fingers. But we should be able to uh, null that out. So I've got 4.627 picofarads, and that's reasonably repeatable if I you know dick around with that hey you know geez you fart halfway across the room and this thing's going to change at the moment when we're down at one femtofarad but anyway all right so let's null that out and see what we get that's not too bad you know that's not too bad I mean we can dick around there but we won't bother so let's stick that in the breadboard look at that two side by side contacts it's only 2.4 picofarads Look at that! Oh, so much for 20 or 10. And just to double check that, let's just remove that again and check the repeatability. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit. It's, you know, I don't have these leads exactly right, but that's going to be near enough. We're in the order of two picofarads. Now, if we measure elsewhere on the board, there we go, two and a half, right over on the edge over here, two and a half. So it looks like. It's pretty darn repeatable. And let's go for one of these power strips down here. I've actually got them connected uh, like this so that usually they're split in the middle like that. So only those along there are connected and those along there. And it actually shows you that uh, visually on there. Just for kicks, let's have a look at the uh, power bus. Sometimes it can be a real pain plugging these uh, square pins in. But there you go. We're over. Look at that. Can't handle it. So we're well over. Our, let's uh, put that back on our auto range. There you go. 20 point, 25 picofarads or thereabouts for the power bus. So maybe that's what they're talking about when they talk about that range from 2 to 25 picofarads. But really, all you, can, you don't really care about the power uh, strips down here usually because you're using them for power. So it's not a huge issue. But uh, yeah, really, the one you've got to care about is the inter- contact capacitance down there. No, hang on, I haven't nulled that out, so because I changed ranges it didn't keep the null, so let's null that out, and we should find it's around about, there we go, 21 odd picofarads for the power bus. And if you're curious to know what they are directly opposite over the inner divider in there, well, it's almost unmeasurable, really. I mean, we're down in the noise of our null, really. It's, you know, it's just not as you'd expect, because they're not physically close together and because there's a big chunk of dielectric taken out. So let's null that out. So I've done this a few times and I have sort of got a repeatable result. Around, let's take it as about uh, 0.5 picofarads there uh, across the dividing strip on this particular breadboard. And the other thing I want to check is does it change if I plug in a fairly large uh, leaded component in there like that. Does it force it open? No, 2.7. There we go. Don't touch it. But of course, as you know, hanging in the air, it's going to disturb it a little bit. But generally, no, forcing those pins in, you'd expect it because technically they're a bit closer. So you'd expect it to increase in capacitance. And that's kind of sort of what you see, but it's not really a big deal. Now this little uh, yellow breadboard, just a one hung low brand. I have no idea what it is, and uh, but I don't expect any different. And no, it's practically the same. And that's what you expect to get because it's based on the physical dimensions. And all these breadboards, physical dimensions are basically the same. And the dielectric constant of the material in there probably isn't going to change a huge amount anyway. I wouldn't expect an order of magnitude difference. So there you go. It is around about that same figure of two puff two picofarads and that one across the uh, dividing strip in the middle even lower than the other one really it's quite down in the noise and this one across the dividing strip in the middle even lower than the uh, K and H one 
you know, point two puff. And we've got another generic brand breadboard here. No idea what brand it is. Once again, two puff. And the power strip on this one, once again, 20, that same figure of around about 20 puff. And one thing I forgot on the other one, curious to know between the power strip and one of the uh, columns in there, we're talking, you know, just over one puff. And this uh, pick development board from gtronics.net. Uh, I don't know the brand of the actual breadboard in here. Don't know where he sources it from, but there you go. Once again, that two puff figure. You can take that to the bank. One thing I haven't done yet, what is the capacitance between um, two contacts that are separated by one unused column? And of course, you'd expect it to halve. And yep, it does. And yep, it's the same on that one and on that one as well. So there you go. And if you're curious to know the capacitance at different frequencies, well, at 100 hertz down here, you know, oh, half a puff, you know, it's barely even measurable down in the noise. And at 1 kilohertz there, we're looking at just over 2 puff. And at 10 kilohertz, as you'd expect, it increases slightly again, 2.25. So there you go. I think that's fairly definitive. I mean, I've tested uh, four different types of breadboards, and they're all identical. Two picofarads capacitance between the individual contacts. And, you know, pretty negligible when you uh, jump over, well, go from the uh, power strip to one of the columns, or when you jump across the columns like that. But... There you go, you can take that figure to the bank and you can plug that into your uh, simulations or something to see why your breadboard is oscillating. <laughs> Nothing can beat empirical measured data like that. I like it. You know, measure your own breadboard and see what you get, but I reckon you'd be hard pressed unless the dielectric material was grossly different uh, to all of the uh, four different ones here, then you should get that same figure because the capacitance is based on the physical dimensions and all these breadboards as I said they're going to be pretty identical in that respect so remember that figure two puff per contact and she'll be right no worries so I hope you enjoyed that quick little empirical uh, video to actually measure this and if you want to discuss it jump on over to the EV log forum catch you next time